Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us live tonight. This is your show Conexiones, a bilingual show about Latin culture in the U.S. Tonight we're going to be talking about different things. We have Adrian Strzok here with us from the New Orleans Public Library. We'll be talking to uh, Ernesto Posadas from Copa Airlines and from Hitla. We're going to take a look at Oyster Fest that took place last weekend. And of course we're going to have Jay telling us what are the best events happening in, in town. So with that being said, we welcome your comments and we welcome your questions for tonight's program. And we're going to welcome Adrian here. How are you? I'm great. And thank you. It's great to be here. I, I was so excited to have you agree to being here tonight because I know the library is about to get really, really busy. Oh, yes. June 1st was when the Summer Fun program started at the library. And I just wanted to give a chance to everyone to find out all the great things that you offer. Sure, and I'd love to talk about summer fun. It is our busiest time of year. Um, so our summer fun program began on June 1st and it ends July 20th. And um, anyone can come into our libraries and sign up for our reading program. Um, and when you sign up, um, kids will, teens will be able to pick out books and adults will get a free library tote bag. Um, and you'll be getting your um, reading tracker and bingo card. Um, I encourage you to stop by the library so you can see it. Um, and there's different ways you can engage with the um, reading card and the bingo card. Um, so we want our kids in the community to be reading over the summer because that's going to help them come back to school um, with the same skills that they left with. There are studies that show if um, when kids don't read or engage in learning over the summer, they can lose up to three months of their education. Wow. Yes. Three months. Yes. Wow. Yes. So we have built in a program um, with our summer fun reading tracker where kids can track reading 20 minutes a day. And as they go along, um, they can read for up to a thousand minutes and get um, raffle tickets to earn bigger prizes. And then also on the card is our bingo. Um, and that's a way for anyone of all ages to just explore different types of reading. Like you can read animal stories or read uh, books recommended by friends. Um, and then we also want you to think about the other things we offer in the library. So we would encourage you on there to check out books or um, movies or to um, check out some of our downloadable offerings, um, our, our e-magazines and things like that. And there's different ways you can get different types of bingo on there and get more chances to win drawing prizes. So we were talking about basic things like that earlier before the show started. Mm -hmm. And it's like these ideas that we have that, okay, New Orleans has 15 public yes. libraries that you can enjoy. You don't have to be an Orleans Parish resident to enjoy them. No, you don't. So all of our events, and including Summer Fun, are free and they're open to anyone. Um, and uh, or, or you can get a library card if you live in the parish. You can bring an ID and proof of address. Or you can get a card if you're outside of the parish. Um, so if you live in Jefferson Parish, you can bring your library card in and get a card and bring your ID. So the um, caveats for that are that you have to have your Jefferson Parish card for 30 days and have no fines or fees on there. Um, and then you just come in every year and you can keep you, um, getting a New Orleans Public Library card. So let's go back to the kids programming. Yes. Because the, you have the reading program. Mm -hmm. So if you fill up your whole bingo, what happens? Um, you would get um, up to nine chances to win prizes. And when you read for a thousand minutes, you can come and pick out another book. And then every time you read 200 minutes when you bring your bingo card in and get your raffle tickets, you can also get stickers um, just to keep you excited about reading. And this is for kids all ages? Yes, all ages. Um, you know, if you're at home with a, a wee bitty baby, uh, we would encourage you to do this with your baby and read your oh, baby. Oh, that's sweet. And that like older siblings can read, yeah, the younger siblings. And you have events for teenagers and for adults. Tell me a little yes. bit about that as well. So we have, um, for teenagers, we have a lot of fun hands-on activities this summer. Um, we've got Nintendo Switch tournaments going on, um, button making, perler beads. Um, we've got um, some STEM kits as well, like activities for kids to do um, with science as well. Um, for our adults, we have a, a DIY focus for a lot of our programs this summer. Um, we're doing a history of the cocktail where you can learn to make different cocktails and learn the history of their origins, um, as well as we'll have um, 
uh, information about home brewing, um, DIY green cleaning um, with SIDS cleaning service, and um, like we'll be doing crafting, making tassels. We do um, wine and coloring or coffee and coloring at a lot of our libraries too. I see here it, it says New Orleans street name spelling bee. Yes. That's really funny. Yes. Yeah, so we have um, a couple of years ago we did a street name spelling bee um, <laughs> at a, a bar and we'll be doing it again. Um, stay tuned for information on that. That's fun. You know, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So many people who are not from here, so many people like me that have a Spanish uh, language first. And some of those names are yes. really tough. You, you, we can ask Siri about that. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> and she'll get it wrong, too. Exactly. Um, but especially if you're new to the city, it's a great way to learn how to pronounce some of the street names, for sure. We're still late learning about <laughs> right. that. So what else can people uh, find out about the library? What else is going on? I know there has been a lot of remodeling happening yeah. over the last couple of years. Tell me some about something about that. So um, we have reopened all of our buildings now that were um, damaged with Hurricane Katrina. Our last building, the Nora Navar Library, opened last July. So it's almost celebrating its first year of being reopened. Um, and it's a gorgeous brand new building. Um, and our main library underwent a renovation last summer and is now just so open and bright and there's a great use of light in that building. It's very big. Um, our ladder uh, library on St. Charles, that beautiful mansion, was renovated a couple of years ago as well. Um, and a lot of people don't know, um, when you come and get your library card, you don't really have to come back. You could just use your library card to do some research online. We have um, lynda.com that you have access to for free, so if wow. you want to do your own learning. Um, we have streaming uh, movie services through things like Canopy and Hoopla. Um, and you can just download those apps and log in with your library card number um, and start streaming um, movies. Um, you can also, um, from a device, and with those, you can use like an Amazon Fire Stick too as well and access just from your TV. Um, we have um, e-magazines through something called Flipster. We have music through Hoopla again um, and something called Freegal. Um, and we have ebooks and e audio books through Hoopla again. That one has a lot of different formats, <laughs> and through um, OverDrive and through something called Cloud Library as well. So the library is up with the times. They, we are. So um, check and see what we have. You may even want to save your money on an Audible subscription um, mm. and or use our resources instead. Yeah. So for more information, for details about the events, mm -hmm. the programs, mm -hmm. everything that's happening. Yes, so we have, there's two places you can go. Um, you can sign up for Summer Fun in any of our libraries or on our website at nolalibrary.org. Um, we also have our monthly magazine that's available at any of our libraries that shows you the events that are going on each month. Um, and you can also view the magazine online at nolalibrary.org. Hey, Jan, thank you so much for being with us tonight and to tell us all these resources and great information about the New Orleans Public thank Library. You. I really appreciate you joining us tonight. And thank you for having me. We love telling everyone about the library. All right. So right now we're going to go back to the last weekend where Oyster Festival took place in the Waldenberg Park and Jay Coelho and I were there suffering a little bit of the heat and enjoying the live music and the oysters. Take a look. Hola amigos de Conexiones, yo soy Jay. Hola, soy Ana María. Y estamos en el Oyster Festival, el evento que les mencioné el miércoles pasado en nuestro programa. Les vamos a contar un poco de cómo está el ambiente aquí en el festival. Bueno, pues hay muchas personas y están batallando un calor infernal. ¿Para qué vamos a decir lo que no es? Está haciendo muchísimo calor, pero de todas maneras hay música en vivo, hay comida deliciosa y es por una buena causa también. Sí, ahorita les damos un tour para que vean todo lo que hay aquí mismo. Bueno, y estas delicias en todas las presentaciones de ostras con el restaurante Green Green, Oceana Grill, Born. Ya sabes que aquí los mariscos se eh, destacan muchísimo y este festival lo que hace es fomentar lo que son las ostras de Luciana. Sí, no solamente hay ostras, sino que hay pop boys que son también hechos de ostras. Eh, las ostras en diferentes presentaciones, como tú lo dices. Súper ricos todos los platillos, como podemos ver ahorita aquí en, este, en una de las carpas. Y te cuento pues que la persona que ganó el concurso de comer ostras en ocho minutos, adivina cuántas ostras se comió. No, no sé cuántas. 
se comió 44, pero no 44 ostras, 44 docenas de ostras. ¡Wow! Yo me puedo comer todas estas ostras, pero no sé en cuántos minutos se la comió este ganador. Yo creo que si yo me como 20 ostras, yo creo que me muero, pero 400, 500 y pico ostras, es increíble. Y es el mismo que se ganó el concurso el año pasado, así que está defendiendo su título el próximo año, supongo yo. Sí, está peleando la batalla, no deja que nadie más le gane. A ver si hay alguien de por aquí que le pueda ganar el próximo año. Ojalá. ¿Qué, qué restaurante es el que estamos viendo ahora mismo? No tengo ni idea porque tantos restaurantes que participaron en este festival y lo único que te digo es que la gente sigue con mucha alegría a pesar sí. del tan calor que está haciendo. Está muy caliente el día, pero eso no los no evita que vengan y disfruten todo. Y aquí están los snowballs, que son los más codiciados de la tarde por el calor. Siempre era la fila más llena de todas, la de los snowballs, porque realmente son perfectos para disfrutar y refrescarse en este calor, aunque había un poquito de brisa del río Mississippi. De todas formas, gracias a Dios tenían snowballs este día. Sí, y ahorita nos estamos acercando al Cultural Tent. Bueno, y en este, por, por supuesto, porque parte del, de la misión del festival es fomentar lo que son las ostras. Entonces aquí nos presentan diferentes organizaciones y información sobre las ostras, cómo crecen, cómo las cultivan, cómo las presentan antes de, de que las lleven al restaurante. Son bien grandes, las conchas son grandes y ya cuando llegan al restaurante pues le quitan una parte y te la sirven con el pedacito de abajo, deliciosas. Mm -hmm. Así es como se cultivan. Aquí estamos viendo esta organización que se encarga de, de preservar todo lo que son los cultivos de ostras en el Golfo de México. Y el festival también recauda fondos para este fin, para proteger las especies, para proteger el Golfo y todo lo que tenemos que, que presentar el Golfo de México, incluyendo los cultivos de ostras. ¡Wow! ¡Qué súper bonito! Eso no lo sabía, qué bueno. Y nos estamos acercando a mi lugar favorito del festival. Al favorito de probablemente de muchísimas personas. Ellos no pueden faltar, ¿no? Sí, los dragos, el restaurante. Son las mejores ostras que he probado, creo. Cuéntenos cuáles son las ostras que también les gustan a ustedes. Las de dragos son icónicas. Ahí llegan turistas en buses para comerse estas charbroil oysters que son súper deliciosísimas. Sí, súper ricas. ¿Para que No te lo puedo negar. Y entonces este es el festival, muy interesante y lo, la próxima, el próximo año pueden volver. Sí, así es. Y bueno amigos, esto fue el Oyster Festival, espero lo hayan disfrutado muchísimo. Recuerden que los vamos a mantener al tanto de todos los festivales que van a estar pasando aquí en la ciudad de Nueva Orleans. Así es, no se pierdan conexiones y cuéntenos también a qué festivales son los que ustedes prefieren ir. Sí, cuéntenos en los comentarios. Bye. Spanglish segment yeah. where we're gonna mix English y Español however it comes, right? I'm here with Ernesto Posadas. He works for Copa Airlines hey guys. and he does a lot of things in the community. He's involved in so many different organizations. One of them that we're gonna be discussing tonight is what it used to be known as HIPLA, but you're gonna tell yes. us all about how you're changing that with your uh, group of directors or board or correct, correct. tell me tell me how that works so the hispanic chamber of commerce is in one of the oldest uh, latino organizations within the state of louisiana and we founded our group under that um under the umbrella of the hispanic chamber now when we named ourselves hispanic young professionals of louisiana i think it kind of got lost in translation and so what we did this year was we rebranded our name into the hispanic chamber of Louisiana Young Professionals. So that way, so we're Hispanic Chamber Young Professionals. That way it's just more uh, vinculated with the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, who's our mother organization. Okay, so young, you, we all wanna be young. We all wanna be professional, <laughs> but getting, we wanna I'm be young. <laughs> so what the, how old do you have to be to be part of the Hispanic Chamber it, Young Professionals? It really actually doesn't matter. Um, how old do you have to be? Uh, I'd say 18 or older uh, and then we literally at our events there's just this such a diverse group of people individuals from 18 I mean we literally have 
uh, board members from the Hispanic Chamber come to every single one of our events. So you necessarily, you don't have to be a young professional to come to our events, right? Um, our board is composed of primarily people from, I'd say, 25 to 35, maybe 40 years old. Um, but honestly, we're open, more than open and welcoming to anyone that wants to be a part of our group and participate in our community activities, in our learning activities, in our professional development activities, and then in our social and networking activities where we just go out and to the city and find a, a cool spot and have fun. You know, you make new friends and socialize. Yeah, how, how is that helpful for uh, people in the professional environment? Well, the way I look at it is, I mean, if you're stuck in an office from nine to five, right? Um, you're sitting in front of a computer desk uh, you might interact with other coworkers, maybe via online or maybe within your office. But it's always refreshing to go out, maybe grab a beer, maybe go grab some dinner, um, and meet new friends, meet new people that are maybe new to the city or have interesting hobbies that can introduce you to new clubs or, or new activities to do within the city. Um, it's just refreshing. You know, I mean, I've met so many of my good friends through just networking, through socializing, through the Chambers of Commerce here in the city um, that it's invaluable. And you also socialize and, and work together with other organizations like um, the Hispanic uh, Chamber of Commerce, young professionals also mm -hmm. do things with the other chambers and... Correct. So we do joint events with the Jefferson Chamber Young Professionals. We do joint events with the Urban League Young Professionals. We do... Uh, joint events with Gino Inc., um, their steering committee. Uh, they actually have a big convention coming up. It's a young professionals convention called Emerge Summit, which is uh, super interesting. Actually, Rocio Mora, which I don't know if you featured on Connections, but you featured her on your magazine, yeah. Viva Nola. Um, she's going to be actually a speaker on, nice. on at ah, this Rocio. event. Yeah, hola Rocio. <laughs> uh, Rocio is our uh, special events chair for the Hispanic Young Professionals. So, all these things that New Orleans is a small city so as Latinos I think it's really important that we participate as one within our community and then we all piece it together you know but no, we're so all connect correct connect to the rest of the community which is part of like why we do it this yes. way it's we are here with Latino we're proud of our heritage but we are part of a bigger community as well that we need to reach out we need to learn about we need to participate correct. in Correct. So, awesome. I always thought it was a great idea to have that um, young professional group. Uh, but so, tell me how you join. Oh, uh, how do you join? Yeah. You actually just, um, you either follow us on Instagram or Facebook. We preferably le would like for you to become a member of the Hispanic Chamber okay. of Commerce. Uh, it's a small fee for um, young professionals. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I would go to hccl.biz. And what they would, what you do there is register, and then you'll start getting emails about activities the chamber's doing, and then you'll get activities about the young professional activities. We actually have a, a networking event coming up on June 27th from 5:30 to 7:30 at Manning's on Fulton Street in mm. New Orleans. It's right next to uh, Opre, if you didn't know that, or uh, Fulton Alley. Um, it should be an awesome time. It's our signature event. And uh, you should have close to 80 to 100 young professionals there um, mingling, having fun. There's complimentary drinks. Um, there's food there. And uh, I'm sure we'll see you there as well. I'll be there for <laughs> uh, a couple of uh, beers and to mingle with people and to get to know a lot of other people and see what, what young professionals, Latino young professionals are doing in the city. Where are you working? What, yeah. You know, what kind of professions, <laughs> careers you're following. I mean, that's very interesting. And it's interesting too to have a support group, yeah. you know, like yeah. you can discuss your problems or you can talk about ways you overcame something and you can do it in a relaxed way with Correct. people who are like you. Right. Sometimes you, you can't discuss your work stresses with your coworkers because it just it's not professional or it's not the right setting but when you can go out to yesterday i went to a running club the 504th mm -hmm. it was awesome it was the second time i've been and one of my friend ray who actually joined just joined the young professionals he invited me to it and i really like it and then he and i we, we ran three and a half miles 
and then we got to talking and he was asking me for professional advice because he's a little bit younger than I am and I got to vent to him about things that were going on with my job or my life um, and so it's just small things that you kind of don't even think about but they do add a value or a quality of life to your life where you just kind of ease out of maybe a certain situation or mentality that you were in, right? Um, another value that the chamber or, or even networking and socializing brings you, um, my job, I'm the sales executive for Copa Airlines. And so my job, I actually got by going to a chamber event, right? I, I, oh, my, really? Yes, yes. My boss had come in, she gave a presentation, and at the end she said, Copa Airlines is looking for a sales executive. And I was there, and I, my face lit up, and I was, so, I was like, oh, my God, this is perfect. So I, um, I gave her my card, and, and uh, it was a process, but, but thank God I, I, I got the job. Yeah. Tell me about your job. You get to travel a lot, huh? Right. I mean, uh, for work. So I'm the sales executive for Copa Airlines in the southeast region, uh, mainly uh, Louisiana, Texas, Alabama, and Mississippi. Um, I'm based here in New Orleans, uh, so if I'm traveling, it's mainly to the local states, but I do travel for fun because okay. of the benefits of the network that Copa Airlines travels, right? So we fly New Orleans to Panama City, Panama, and that connects you to Sud America, Centro America, El Caribe. So it's 83 destinations in 32 countries. So imagine uh, going to Brazil or Argentina. I mean, it's just the sky's the limit. I've been to Cuba. Um, well, now people are going to be uh, right. have a little more trouble going to right. Cuba, which is unfortunate because it's, it's so beautiful and, and the people, la gente de Cuba, la mejor parte, uh, son uh, son. Saludos entonces a todos sí. los cubanos. Sí, o sea, la gente cubana de en Cuba son una una maravilla, um, and so getting that privilege of 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 going out and seeing the world, specifically like my roots, right? I was born and raised here. Yo nací y crecí aquí en New Orleans. Una madre hondureña y una padre, eh, un padre guatemalteco. Entonces, no soy ni de aquí ni de allá, pero <laughs> eh, soy orgulloso de ser latino y, y ambamente a la misma vez soy orgulloso de ser de New Orleans, ¿verdad? Entonces, poder conectar esas dos culturas, o sea que exportar la cultura de New Orleans a América Latina, mientras también traer América Latina a New Orleans, y viceversa, o sea que eh, llevar a, eh, en septiembre vamos con Gino Wink, vamos 100 empresarios a Bogotá, vamos a tu país, uh -huh. eh, que fue mi recomendación porque eh, he ido a Colombia que tres veces y la gente de Colombia es una maravilla y Colombia es bello, eh, entonces vamos a llevar a 100 empresarios a ver how to do business en Colombia, um, vamos a encontrar con la embajada, so it's a very interesting kind of business to business experience and a lot of things, a lot of uh, opportunity comes from having international connectivity. So if you look at Miami, if you look at Houston, um, you think though they have jobs, they have economic development, they have opportunity, you have a professional like me who can really move up the ladder, the corporate ladder. Whereas in New Orleans, we're starting to get that. But it, it hasn't fully fruition yet. Yeah, and definitely. So, and so what, when you go to Miami and you go to Brickell, the financial district, I mean, that's, that's international money. That's Russian money. That's Venezuelan money. That's a lot of just international fluctuations of money. You go to Houston, you have every oil conglomerate in that city where it's just blowing up. And so the economic opportunities, the uh, job opportunities that you have in these big cities with a lot of international movement of people and companies and businesses. Trade, yes. Uh, right. It, it provides an opportunity. And New Orleans was that. I, I know. I was just about to say that. Yeah. Like New Orleans was that. And then Miami took over. And we, you know, through kind of like with what they're doing with GNOA and they're trying to bring that back to Correct. for New Orleans to be the what, the gateway to the Americas? Is that what it was? I don't I don't know if we'll ever bring that back. Um, I, I am on GNO Inc's Next Gen Council, so it's very informative. And GNO Inc, for those of you that don't know, GNO Inc is the um, economic, organi economic development organization 
the ones that brought in Copa Airlines, the ones that brought in uh, British Airways, the ones that bring in uh, technology companies like DXC Technology or GE, um, they're the ones that are bringing about the economic opportunities that us young professionals are looking for. Mm -hmm. And anyone in this region is looking for that because it improves the quality of life for everyone. So um, what we, t we were talking about... Um, the gateway of the Americas? The gateway to the Americas. So if you look at New Orleans, we have the Mississippi River, right? Which is the largest river in North America. And yes. then we have railway. We have a railway that reaches any part of our country. And mm -hmm. so why wouldn't we be that import trade hub that we once were, right? It's just going to be a process to redo um, and the airport is doing the expansion as well. Correct, correct. And I think that's all, it's all part of it, right? It, it's, all, it's all something that, that eventually will come together. And people, it's, uh, you, it's hard to, to see it now. You say, oh, we spent a billion dollars on a new airport for what? But you have to look at it in a future sense, right? Mm -hmm. uh, five years from now, when I have a little kid or something, I don't want him to look at the old airport and say, whoa, this is super old. Whereas like, he's going to the new airport and be like, man, I really, this is awesome. I want to see the world, you know? I really want to go anywhere that this place will bring me. Yeah, and with all that together, you know, the economy will boom. And then your kid, when he's older, <laughs> uh, your potential kid, <laughs> when he's older, then Not he gone. doesn't have to think about leaving New Orleans to a better market. This Correct. can be that market that we can be part of it, um, making stronger for a future Correct. generations. Correct. And, th and that's the, I think the Gino Inc. My model, Michael Heck, the CEO, he says, um, think of New Orleans as what opportunities will there be, will there be for my children in the future in New Orleans? So think of it now to start those steps, that building process, so that our kids in the future can have that opportunity. And that goes for everything, especially with the Latino community. If you look at our population of public school students in Jefferson Parish, what is it? I think like 30, 40% Latino? I'm not sure. As I, I, will, I will tell you the wrong information, <laughs> but I know it's definitely growing by the day and they have yeah to expand their ESL programs Correct. and they had to add schools with all these programs for um, right. Spanish speakers, right? Yeah, English language. I think Learners. They, it's English, yes. like ELL now. So it was ESL when I was growing up, but it's ELL now. Uh -huh. And uh, I find it so interesting because as us as young professionals, I know my team went to West Jefferson High School in May, early May, or May, it might have been May, uh, end of April. And they just kind of, presented to these West Jefferson, I think they were juniors or seniors or maybe even sophomores, and said a talked a little bit about their jobs. And you know, when I was in high school, when I was in grammar school, I didn't really see anybody that came to my school and looked like me, that spoke Spanish like me, that was a first generation Latin American like me. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't yeah. have that, you know? Um, Representation is key. Correcto. Es, ellos se relacionan. Entonces, it's, it's important for us to be present in our community, to make sure que estamos levant nos estamos levantando como sociedad, como comunidad eh, latina, porque nosotros somos una parte tan importante de esta economía. O sea que la, people are, la gente se olvida that Latino immigrants came here and rebuilt the city for half the price and half the time, right? They're no, so quick. I, I don't forget it. Oh, but people but do. Yeah. People do. Yeah, people do. Especially with the rhetoric and going on in Washington with the president. It's just people forget it. And it's really sad because I know so many people that are doing better because of the, la the low cost labor that came into the city. Uh, I know so many people that um, the city itself is, is, is better because our people came back and, 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 and are working. Yeah, and whoever was part of that and their kids need to be proud of their input into into this community. Correct. Regardless of what other people say. Like there is uh there's gonna be a pride sí. from those people who actually sí. did the 
effort and sí. from all of us as a community sí. to, to be proud of uh, yeah. of how this city was rebuilt. Yeah, we have to we have to make sure that it's known that that it's remembered. So I was so proud of the new statue that uh, Dr. Gershanik founded on the riverfront about the the Latino laborers that came and uh, and he he did that in their honor. But yeah, you, you, we have to be orgulloso. Tenemos que ser orgulloso del trabajo que nosotros hicimos y seguimos haciendo en esta comunidad. Porque no sería, esta comunidad no sería lo que es sin nosotros. And, and not only like, you know, proud of our work, but like, the, I think the culture is becoming more rich. There is yeah. all these other events and uh, foods that people get to taste and, and just learn about each other, learn about Correct. our communities. Correct. So I, I think we had a great discussion. <laughs> I want you to remind yeah. everyone about the event coming up uh, at the end of the month for yes. the Hispanic Young Professionals. Yes, yes, yes. It's uh, June 27th at Manning's on Fulton Street uh, in New Orleans, close to Harris Casino. Um, it's from 5.30 to 7.30, and uh, you'll have a compliment complimentary cocktail, uh, some light snacks, and then a good networking, networking event. Um, I hope to see everyone there. Todo, todo el mundo está invitado, por favor, yeah. No, well, you don't have to be Hispanic to go to no, the event, right? No, no, you don't have to speak Spanish. Uh, we have such a diverse group of people that come to all our events. And one of the big things about the Hispanic Chamber of Young Professionals that all my friends ask me, they're like, well, I don't speak Spanish or I'm not Hispanic. Um, can I go? And it's like, yes, yes, please come. Everyone is welcome. Yeah. So that's a great event, but then we have more events coming up and Jay Coelho is gonna let us know about the coolest events in town. So let's take it, Jay. Hola a todos, soy Jay Coelho y estos son los eventos más cool de NOLA. No olvides que mañana es la gran presentación de Draco Rosa en House of Blues. No te pierdas una noche de buen rock con Draco Rosa y su gira Monte Sagrado. La celebración New Orleans Pride también da inicio mañana y finaliza el domingo 9. Los desfiles son el sábado a las 7.30 en el French Quarter. No te pierdas la alegría de este NOLA Pride 2019. Te cuento que este fin de semana estaremos en el French Market Creole Tomato Festival. Vayamos juntos a disfrutar de la música en vivo, los deliciosos platillos y las deliciosas Bloody Marys. El próximo fin de semana, el New Orleans Tango Festival vuelve al French Quarter con una lista emocionante de artistas y DJs invitados. Este festival de tango tendrá lugar del 13 al 16 de junio en el Aston Crown Plaza Hotel. El comediante y actor Felipe Esparza estará este 15 de junio en el Joy Theater en su show The Bad Hambre Tour. Puertas abren a las 7 y los tickets tendrán un costo de 35 a 60 dólares. Así que ve asegurando tus entradas desde ya. Para más detalles de todos estos eventos, visita vivanolamac.com. Cuéntanos en los comentarios cuáles eventos asistirás. Yo soy Jay Cuello y te espero la próxima semana con más eventos aquí en NOLA. Gracias, Jay. Estuvimos en el Oyster Fest y espero que podamos ir entonces al Creole Tomato Festival, que va a estar buenísimo, y nos vamos a tomar juntas una Bloody Mary. Así que, ya, ya estás aquí con nosotros en el set. Sí. Ernesto, muchas gracias por haber estado con nosotros. Me, me encantó la conversación que tuvimos. Thank you so much for uh, being here. It was great to talk to you and to discuss a bunch of different issues mm -hmm. that are uh, very important in our community yes so are we going to the tomato creole festival we are going to creole tomato festival yes y this draco weekend. rosa vas a ir draco rosa estará mañana como bien lo dije ahorita eh, en house of blues también tenemos que ir a estar en ese gran evento de, de rock a pasarla súper bien bueno gracias a todos por estar con nosotros pueden seguir poniendo sus comentarios si tienen alguna pregunta para ernesto para Jay, para, para cualquiera de los invitados que estuvieron esta noche, eh, si quieren saber más sobre la biblioteca, pueden hacerlo, dejar nuestros comentarios que les vamos a contestar cualquier inquietud que tengan. Y como siempre, estaremos aquí la próxima semana, ¿así es? Así es, el próximo miércoles, por aquí mismo. Viva Nola. A las seis. Bye. Bye. Bye.